Um, I'd actually like, like you to start uh, with explaining to people how you started working on this notion of open networking because you were doing it uh, while you were still with Gold Baron and even before you got to Argo. And that was sort of at the core of this internet idea. So where did that come from? Yeah, that's a, an interesting question. Uh, let, let me lean into it, though, that with one observation to the audience here. Uh, a number of years ago, I gave a lecture at the National Academy in Washington on uh, the internet. And we, it was to an Intel science search, or maybe it was let's get house with all these Kids uh, 15, 16, 17 years old are all there competing for the finals. And this one young lady who was the spokesman for the group got up at the end of the talk and thanked me very much. I mean, I gave full credit to them too. And she said, You know, the work that you did is so important to us. We use the internet every day, but we have one burning question. And the question was, How did we manage to convince all the governments of the world to let us build the internet? <laughs> This is a real question for them, because this is the world they live in now. If you tried to go out and replicate what Vint and I did back then, you probably couldn't do it, because it's too much understood in too many places, and there are too many other issues associated with it. But I said back then, you're not going to like my answer. And I said, except for maybe Vint, myself, and a few others, nobody thought this was a good idea. <laughs> and you might find that hard to believe now, since it took up so much had so much uptake, but the reality was nobody really thought it was a good idea back then in terms of business opportunities and the like, and so we were given pretty much a free reign. I've got a lot more stories about that, but let me deal with the questions that put on the table. Um, back in the, the time frame when we started working on the internet, as I, even before that, we were in a world very different from today's world. Big personal computers, uh, didn't exist. They were shared and they were very expensive. The personal computers, you know it, didn't exist at all. Uh, most of the conversations that we had with some of the big companies, even though I think they were probably described improperly at the time they didn't understand or whatever, we didn't appreciate, they weren't business opportunities. You might have had a hundred companies that could connect to a network. It just wasn't a business proposition. So. You know, an organization like AT&T was perfectly happy to sell us the digital lines and you know, take the money to the bank, but the question was, you know, how do you make them work together? That was an interesting research idea. By the time I had gotten to DARPA, we already had built the internet. And I was involved in the design of that. Uh, we had uh, <coughs> many involvement from universities around the country. DARPA paid for it. And it was so successful that in 1972, after we did the first public demo, they invited me to come into the office saying that I'm running it. This um, is a public demo of the ARPA. Public demo of the ARPA. Today, most people tend to think of the internet as a network. And I don't. And I've said that, in fact, here at the previous conferences, so this may be old hat for some of you. But to me, the internet is a, a set of protocols and procedures for connecting lots of different components. And it's taken, you know, many, many years for people to really appreciate the full power of it, but it's scaled by a factor of a million or it's like I you know, I think there is no other technical invention I can think of that's had that much scalability over the course of its lifetime. That's because it's about the protocols. It's not about the underlying networks. And therefore anything can be part of it. It was one of the very first designs that was agnostic about the technology it was dealing with. So it's got a shot at working for a very long time in the future. Somebody may come up with a better idea. There are people here on the campus who are thinking about lots of good ideas. Maybe one of them will be of that form. But uh, you know, I think what we did back then was a design at a level that let lots of things happen underneath, and they have. So in networks, we went from 300 baud, 2400 baud, we're up in the billion bit range. Maybe we'll be in the trillion bit range, and yet the protocols continue to continue to work. So the idea of the internet was if we've got multiple networks of different kinds, and we already had one for sure, and when I got to DARPA, I led the charge to build a second one it was called Packet Radio. For those of you who know about today's cellular world, it's really a, a kind of a precursor that has the same basic functionality as the CDMA network has, direct sequence spread spectrum, if that means something to you. Uh, we didn't even have micros when I first started it. 
We ended up, the Intel 808 came out during that process. We ended up using the first 16-bit micro when we actually built it.